We are here to present to you Journey to the Abyss, William Beebe's exploration of the human depths. In 2016, which means we all know about Jacques Cousteau or Lucy Pickard, yet little of us have any recollection of the figure the name William Beebe. This is a story of a revolution in the exploration of the ocean abyss, strange encounters with new life, and exchanging wonders for the world. William Beebe was born on July 29, 1877, in Brooklyn, New York. When he was a young child, his family moved to East Orange, New Jersey. Some of my fondest childhood memories are when my family and I went to watch lectures at the Museum of Natural History. They were quite absorbing. Afterwards, I began collecting specimens of insects and other organisms from my backyard, and my mother taught me about the natural world when my father was away. Bibi's interest in nature was boundless. When he was in college, he moved into a special class because of his intelligence. He never graduated because it was too easy for him. Instead, started his career early. By the time he was 22 years, he was appointed assistant curator of birds at the Bronx Zoo, and he later obtained the position of full curator. He also wrote many books, which made him famous in America. Of course, my fascination of the ocean was inevitable. When I was 51, I converted my studies to exploring its depths. I started writing in newspapers about the mysteries of the ocean, which greatly surprised the public. The president, Theodore Roosevelt, was interested in ocean exploration as well and he first interested me in the idea of underwater submersible. Then, one day in William Beebe's office at the Bronx Zoo, two people met to come in partners for most of their lives and heroes for centuries to come. Otis Barden, an engineer and Harvard graduate, had the idea of an underwater diving sphere for a while before he had met Beebe, and after reading his articles on the ocean, decided to show his man to him on December 28, 1928. Let's hope Beebe doesn't see me as a fool. He's known for turning away silly ideas, and I'm worried to turn away mine as well, seeing that other people think my ideas are absurd. Martin, this is brilliant! This could be one of the greatest scientific accomplishments of the century! So you're in! Oh, don't act so surprised. How can I miss a chance like this, of course? One of them took his ideas from Watson Stone and Dogs Company, who, along with many other steel companies, constructed the world's first deep sea diving sphere. The bathosphere. The first bathosphere is too heavy, about five tons. The ship drawn on Foxes Island forbid Bart and the use of their ships because of the burdens and weight. They what? There was nothing wrong with it except the weight. It doesn't matter. Work in the field has nothing to do with dignity or anything except patience, concentration, and eternal vigilance. Bart then created a new caster, which would travel through Bermuda without a problem. Does this work? Yes. Thank you. They then assembled a team of researchers, including some, several women scientists, which greatly surprised the public. But out of working with William Beebe came many great women scientists, including myself, Gloria Hollister, famous conservationist and explorer. To me, what matters most in a researcher is not gender, but what is between the ears. Well, now that we have a research team and an operational diving craft, let's get to work. After years of thinking, creating, frustrations, and mathematics, NBC News broadcast one dive in 1932, making William Beebe even more famous. If this dive failed, the nation would know in seconds. Still, Beebe and Barton did not hesitate to risk their lives, reputation, and memory in the name of science. After only a short period of time, Barton began to suffer from seasickness. Oh, God, Otis, not now. Still, the two continued their dive in hopes of a successful broadcast, staying loyal to their tasks. Ready up there, Hollister? Ready. Are you ready? The color of the water is the bluest black imaginable. No effective penetration of sunlight. I'm impressed with the tremendous importance of animal life in the stone. It is as black as Hades. A school of brilliantly illuminated jellyfish with pale green light can be three feet up the windows. I have never seen such brilliant light. 
Everywhere DD spoke was transmitted to the surface and broadcast to the radios across the nation. People were mesmerized by the details of obscure light bulbs, which they would later come to doubt. We're at 2,200 feet. Can you believe this, Will? This is the deepest anyone has gotten to alive. Of course I can. I've dreamed of this since I wrote my first newspaper article about the ocean. Four good pictures going by, and hundreds of others. A fish is going by that is like six inches long in deep shape. More jellyfish than anything else. Many petropods. Everything all lights and lighted up. We must now conclude this broadcast. Otis Bart and I bid you farewell from a depth of 2,200 feet beneath the surface of the Atlantic Ocean off Bermuda. That ended their broadcast. But years later, on August, tw on August 27, 1934, BB and Bart and went almost half a mile, setting a new record of 3,028 feet. Ugh. Feels good to stretch my legs again. It was a wonderful experience, to be honest. Fish squid up to this. If we died, we would have died in a nanosecond, and you know that. BB and Barnum were to adventure on a multitude of more or less famous dives, even after the world record setting exploration of 1934. After their final dive on August 27, 1934, BB and Barnum parted ways and never spoke again. Their bond, which faded with faulty letters to newspaper editors by Barnum, completely disintegrated over the years. Oh no, what did he write this time?
specifically to this problem? Well, it all started when I've always been interested in ocean exploration, and I've done recent, just years ago, I've done projects with like Jacques Cousteau, and I was watching, I remember watching a documentary about the bathosphere on TV once, and when the NHD project came up, it was an opportunity, and I wanted to, I was interested in the project to do a skit, so I asked both of them to join me. Oh, it was Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One person ditched us. <laughs> 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 um, what was uh, the most important thing academically that you knew through from this in your research and in this conference? Some of the greatest heroes are unsung heroes. And do you think that we drew from this that Research is the most important because the less research you do, the less you know about this topic, and the less you succeed in doing what you have to do. I found the story of their friendship and then their not getting along um, heartbreaking in some ways. Did you have any moments other than the person pitching you? How did you all work together?